Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Lock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. God made the male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Welcome back to God's Playbook, friends. Today, we're going to talk about the sacrament of marriage or holy matrimony. This sacrament is one of the two sacraments of vocation. This, along with holy orders, helps us to identify the grace that we need to live the sacrament of vocation. In this case, the sacrament shared between a husband and wife, a man and a woman, as God joins two hearts in one, as an expression and sign of God's love found to us in married life. Matrimony reflects Jesus' paschal mystery and the love of the Trinity. Married love is to be self-giving, forgiving, faithful, intimate, and creative. The Catholic concept of Christian marriage involves much more than just holding a wedding ceremony in a church. What makes a marriage Christian isn't a church blessing added to a legal contract. Christian marriage is a relationship of life-giving love in which a man and woman make the love of Christ present to each other and become a sign of the love of Christ to those around them. Through their love and faithfulness, they are called to help each other to grow and live in holiness. Jesus gave us the sacraments in the church so that we can continue to feel his loving touch in our daily lives. In marriage, the relationship of the couple is the sacrament that reveals the love of God for all of us. The church didn't invent marriage. At first, there wasn't even a special Christian form of marriage. Through Jesus' teachings, the faithful realized that marriage should be appreciated as a sacred vocation. The church continues to praise the goodness of family life. The family is at the very core of our society. And the church continues to teach that married love is a sharing in God's love. Catholics are meant to see marriage as a sacred covenant, a way of joining the shared lives of a couple with God. It's a way of living that adds richness and value to married lives and serves as a witness of God's love in the world. We understand that the true nature of married love only when we realize that it comes from God. God who is the source of all love. Catholics believe that a marriage between two baptized Christians is sacramental, a sign of Christ. In the rite of marriage, the church recognizes the exchange of consent between the spouses to be an indispensable element that makes the marriage. The partners mutually give themselves to each other. I take you to be my husband or wife. This consent binds the spouses to each other and helps to find its fulfillment in the two becoming one flesh. This consent must be freely given. And so this is one of the elements of the sacramental nature of holy matrimony. It must be freely given. Nobody's forcing the man to marry this woman. Nobody's forcing this woman to marry this man. This is of their own free will. The couple exchange rings as a sign of their love and fidelity to each other and as a reminder of God's never-ending love and faithfulness. Notice the shape of a ring, a circle. God's love has no beginning and no end. It is infinite. A married couple is invited to express that love for each other every single time they look at that ring, 
as a reminder, whether they are in the same room as their spouse or not, of the important nature of the sacrament, a call to love. A married couple that makes Christ present to each other is a couple that has truly entered into the sacrament of God's love. The ministers of the sacrament and of holy matrimony are not the priest, the deacon, or the bishop. Rather, it's the husband and wife themselves. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, we hear, We have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in them. The second element that makes a marriage holy is that it is meant to be lifelong. The church sees sacraments as being lifelong. They are not meant for a period of time and then to be forgotten or shelved, so to speak. So, in death do us part is something that is so important for couples to realize that this commitment they make to each other in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, they commit each other to love and honor each other all the days of my life. And as church, we pray that God will bless this couple with many years of health and happiness together before one or both may be called home to the eternal banquet first prepared in the Father's house. This is important for us to understand that marriage is a covenantal bond, a sacred bond between God, the one who is the groom, and the one who is the bride. There are three hands uniting in this holy and powerful sacrament of God's love. We learn to love each other more, and we learn to love God more all the days of my life. The third element of the sacrament deals with the purpose of marriage, the union of one man and one woman for the procreation and education of children, the beginning of the family unit, which starts as two people, and then with God's grace and blessing and openness to children. And so the couple is invited to an openness to receive new life as they first express their love for each other by an openness of receiving love from God and the gift of a child. Married couples may find opportunities of learning acceptance, tolerance, and forgiveness. A particular scripture that is often used at Christian weddings comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I might suggest you might even have this memorized because I would bet that the last wedding you were at, this passage was used. Though not always the case, often is used. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or envious or boastful or rude. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Heard that passage before once or twice? Might be a familiar passage, but the question is, am I living the passage? For those of us who are married, for those of us who are ordained ministers of the church, and single people too. For the love described here is not just reserved for husband and wife, but definitely should be modeled in all of our marriages. We find additional definitions of love throughout the scriptures as God reveals his love for us. God is love is something that we hear over and over. And so if God is love, then we are called in our encounter with one another to also show our love for God by what we say and do for one another. And so in marriage, the spouses are willing and desiring to express their love for each other in many different ways. Founded on God's giving of himself, married love is based on giving. Total loving means total giving of oneself, freely and wholeheartedly. 
Married love is a choice to love our spouse unconditionally, above all other people, and requires sacrifice for the good of the other. In choosing to love, I must make a decision to give without resentment, to forgive completely, and to put the other's needs before that of my own. Two people joined in marriage become one as they share their unique gifts for the sake of the other. Love is forgiving. God's mercy and forgiveness is reflected in the way a couple reconciles differences, forgives hurts, and heals each other. A willingness to reconcile again and again is an example of the desire for reconciliation that God has for us. How beautiful it is for one spouse to hear the other say, I'm sorry, I love you, I forgive you, let's move on together. That's what true love is, forgiving. How many times are we called to forgive our spouse, to love our spouse? When has my willingness to forgive or ask for forgiveness strengthened my relationship with my spouse? Have I witnessed or shared self-giving love in my marriage lately? Love is meant to be faithful. A couple promises on their wedding day to love and honor each other as husband and wife all the days of their lives. This promise isn't just for the day or for the honeymoon or for the first year of their marriage. It shouldn't go through a season in life. It's a lifelong commitment that never ends. God's faithfulness to us is evident in the commitment a couple makes to each other to live for their lifetime. It means affirmation instead of criticism openness instead of dismissiveness, communication instead of the silent treatment, collaboration instead of demands. Modeled on God's faithfulness, married life accepts, affirms, looks for the good, and encourages personal growth. Married couples need to model faithful love. Am I currently modeling love in my marriage? How might I further affirm and thank my spouse for all that he or she does for me? Love is meant to be intimate. God's love for us is passionate, joyful, and intimate. And its qualities are reflected in a couple's passion for each other. They pledged to remain faithful to each other, that they would not seek others outside of their own intimate and beautiful covenant that they have shared with one another. Their intimacy goes beyond sexual intimacy. The very core of their beings, intimacy enjoyed in marriage is sexual, emotional, and spiritual. The marital embrace itself expresses the love of husband and wife and also makes the love grow. Sexual relations in marriage are blessed by God and are a way to enrich each other through mutual self-giving. It is in the beautiful expression and love for a husband and wife that a child is formed and new life is given. And so it is not meant to just bring pleasure to the husband and wife, though that is certainly an element of sexual intimacy Rather, it's an expression of the self-giving of each other. Their love makes them not two persons, but one body, as their bodies unite. But love that is intimate also speaks of my deep desire to please you, to look after your needs, to care for you above all others. My spouse needs to be the most important person in my life outside of God. Of course, God is number one, but here on earth of all human beings, my spouse needs to be my number one. Married love that leads to growth and intimacy mirrors the love that God has for us. 
how am I being called to be more intimate beyond the physical with my spouse? When's the last time my spouse and I shared spiritual intimacy together? How can I grow in our emotional intimacy with my spouse? Love is also meant to be creative, friends. Sharing in God's creative love, the couple is privileged to share the most exalted part of God's creative work, the creation of another human being. The generosity and love is a reflection of the Creator's love for us. And so an essential dimension of marriage, again, is the openness of fertility to produce children. It means much more than the act of conception. Rather, it's the encouragement and support given to each other for the raising of children. Catholic couples must be willing to bring life through each other and mutually share in the work of nurturing that life to adulthood. We hear in the Catechism, the fruitfulness of marriage isn't limited to children. If a couple is unable to have children, their marriage can still radiate a fruitfulness of charity, of hospitality, and of sacrifice. The sexual difference and complementarity of man and woman are part of God's design. Based on the understanding of God's design and will, the Catholic Church teaches that marriage is to be between one woman and one man. How can I further participate in the building of God's kingdom? How can I recommit myself to not only an openness to have children, but to recommit myself in the raising of our children currently? How can I further support my spouse in the raising of our children together, nurturing them to adulthood? For those of us who perhaps are not called or cannot bear children naturally, am I opening my heart to adoption and seeing that God may be calling us in our marriage to receive children into our lives who are born to us through other biological parents? Can we see God moving through us? Love is also meant in oneness. There is strength and beauty in a couple whose members are truly one. Each person, though distinct, yet together, they're a more complete whole. I love seeing couples that complement each other. Sometimes opposites attract, sometimes similarities attract. And yet, when we see a couple working together, what a powerful expression of what that means, what marriage is truly exercised when they complement each other. God is best revealed in marriage because God is relationship. In the blending of two becoming one flesh, one can catch a glimpse of the unity and mystery of the Holy Trinity. And so couples give flesh to Christ's love through intimacy and belonging. The church and the community have the responsibility to pray for and to assist all married couples, to help them to live out their vocation and covenantal bond. One way the church does this is through marriage preparation, as well as the support that they give throughout the marriage. And when couples are facing difficult times, Wonderful programs like Retrovi are a way of helping to reignite that fire, that spark of love first given to us on the day of our marriage when we made that covenantal bond. Now, you might ask yourself, why does the church talk about being married in the church? Every Catholic person is obliged by church law to have their marriage witnessed before a priest, deacon, or bishop in a church. Again, the ones who administer the sacrament are the husband and wife themselves. And as they take vows, which can be made anywhere, 
and promises made anywhere, when done in the house of God, the couple receives a very special sacramental grace. As the ordained minister of the church who represents God witnesses those vows and gives God's blessing, it is the Holy Spirit who comes upon them in the sacred bond. Within the wedding ceremony itself, whether it is two Catholics who are being married at Mass, or perhaps a mixed marriage of one Catholic and another who is baptized in another faith background, or perhaps not baptized at all. There are special blessings given, including the nuptial blessing, which connects from the beginning of time to the current time how God works through salvation history to assist us. And so I encourage you, if you are thinking about becoming married, if you're dating and about to be engaged, or if you are engaged, call your local parish priest and you have your marriage booked in a church. Why? Because this is God's house. And just as receive the other sacraments of God's love in his house, God wishes to flood your souls with his grace as you stand before his altar and share that covenantal bond. Now you may be thinking, well, Father Rico, I wish to have my wedding in another country or in another city to which I don't live. Again, there is a Catholic church everywhere in the world. So contact the local parish priest where you live and also the parish priest where you wish to have your wedding celebration that you can have the ceremony take place in the church and then again your reception or other rites and ceremonies can take place in other venues afterwards. Marriage should not take place on a beach or outdoors or some other place. That's great for ceremonies of celebration afterwards, the reception, the party, the honeymoon. These are great opportunities to recognize the beauty of nature. But when we gather around God's altar, heaven and earth are united in this sacred covenantal bond. And so friends, if you've exchanged your vows with your loved one at a destination, wedding, on a beach, in a vineyard, or some other place, I strongly encourage you to receive this sacramental bond. Give your local priest a call. He might ask why you may or may not have come to the church originally. But nonetheless, it's not there to judge you. It's to get a sense of where you might be in your own sacramental life. What a beautiful opportunity to renew your vows that you've made to each other and have them blessed by God. This process is called a convalidation. We're asking God to validate the vows that may have been shared previously somewhere else or in some other setting. But the difference is the promises made by husband and wife are now blessed by God as you express them at his altar. You may choose the same date on the anniversary of your civil wedding, or perhaps a new date may be chosen so that you can always remember that this is the day in which God blessed us. Even if this has been many years, friends, don't be afraid to call your local parish priest so that he can walk with you in arranging a time to have your marriage blessed. In many celebrations, sometimes couples have come to me and they've decided to keep it very intimate and small. In other cases, they see the beauty of it and they wish to invite everyone that they know. This is not meant to be expensive. This is not cost prohibitive in any way. Rather, this is an opportunity of God's grace. Allow the church to help you to experience that love of God, friends, for those who may have been married outside of the church. Father, can I be married in the church if I'm marrying someone who is not Catholic? The answer is yes. While all Catholics are required to marry in the Catholic Church, you are also permitted to marry someone who is not Catholic. Again, give your parish priest a call and he will walk with you in the process to being married, which continues the same way whether it's two Catholics or a Catholic and someone of another faith background. The question of having a full mass at the wedding 
the reception of Jesus in Holy Communion, if only one of the parties is Catholic, is a conversation that you should have with your own parish priest. But once again, friends, so vitally important to have the vows celebrated within the church so that God can bless them with his grace. When you have questions about this, feel free to ask your local parish priest and he will walk with you. For those contemplating marriage, be assured of the prayers of the ordained and lay faithful of God. We know that at times marriage statistics might be scary. 50% divorce rate in this country may deter those from entering into this covenantal bond. And yet the same statistics suggest that not just those of Catholic background, but anyone who practices faith, the success rate of marriage is 86%, which I would suggest is even higher when couples practice their faith on a weekly basis, receiving Jesus in Holy Communion, frequenting the Sacrament of Reconciliation and living our faith in a real way. The chances of success are much higher. Why? Because I come to understand the elements of this vocational call as I have described previously. So friends, may we see this covenantal bond as a great gift to the church. I love seeing married couples, young and young at heart. I love renewing vows of couples who may have celebrated five, 10, 25, 35, 50, 60 years, maybe more. This beautiful expression of the covenantal bond found between husband and wife, that commitment that is unique and special that we talk about in the sacrament. May we always pray for couples, couples that are happily married, couples that are struggling in marriage. Again, if you are currently struggling in your marriage, perhaps programs like Retrovive, marriage counseling, or sitting down with your parish priest are ways to not feel judged, but rather to be supported. Sometimes difficulties and trials come. And yet in the face of them, we are given perspective when we allow others to walk with us. Be assured of the prayers of the church that God may support you in your marriage, that the love you first received and celebrated on your beautiful wedding day may sustain you for many years to come. Let us pray for those who are considering marriage and those who are currently married as we pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of married life. We ask that you continue to bless all those who feel the call of marriage and are yet to find their life partner. Help them to look at others through the lens of Christ, that they may find their partner and turn to you in prayer to find their loved one. We pray for those who are engaged, preparing for marriage, that as they have found their life partner, they may choose to have their marriage vows blessed before you in your house and the church. Lord, bless those who are married. Sustain all marriages. May the love of husband and wife deepen and grow. May they turn to you and find strength in the grace of the sacrament that they have received to sustain them, especially when things get tough. May those who feel that their marriages are over turn to you for their strength. May they put their egos aside and never feel ashamed to come forward and ask for help. For indeed, the church is there with them. We thank you for giving us the church to support us, to pray for us, and guide us. Lord, we thank you for the gift of married life. Bless us as we come to serve you in this great sacrament of service. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us on our Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I, or GoFundMe at God's Playbook Podcast. Thanks, and God bless.